हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज प्रशांत अग्रवाल एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर एप्लीकेशंस बैंगलोर इंस्टीट्यूशन गाजियाबाद वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस वीडियो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल कवर टू कंप्यूट द शॉर्टेस्ट पाथ विद द हेल्प ऑफ नाइकेस्ट्रा एल्गोरिथम in the previous video we have i told you that uh, how to compute the shortest path with the help of bellman ford algorithm and we have learned many thing that graph cannot have negative cycle because if any of the graph is having negative cycle so we cannot compute the shortest path anyhow uh, how to use the relax and how to set the initial setting by the initialize in the source vertex so all these concept that what we have learned in the previous video will help us Understand Dijkstra algorithm in much better way. So let us start the Dijkstra algorithm. But before starting, you, you should know the difference. Uh, the what we did into the Bellman fold and what we are going to do into the Dijkstra. The first basic difference is that Dijkstra before applying Dijkstra algo, you have to know your graph cannot have any negative edge in Bellman fold. Uh, there was no restriction on that so graph can have the negative cycle but in dijkstra algorithm there is a restriction about the value of the edge the edge cannot be negative so if any of the edge cannot be negative so the the possibility of having negative cycle is become nil so before applying the dijkstra algo make sure the graph cannot have any negative edge So in this example, you can see the all the edges are positive. So we can apply the Dijkstra algorithm. This is the prerequisite for the Dijkstra algorithm. So in the line number one, we are doing the same similar setting as what we did into the Bellman fold. We are initializing single source function, and in which we will set the value of the pi for all the vertices as nil. We will set the value of the t uh, for all the vertices uh, infinite. Just Uh, except that uh, source vertex and the value of the source vertex will remain zero. In the line number two, we are having uh, this S is not as similar to what we are using as a source vertex. This S is a set basically, and initially it is empty. And that's why we are representing it by phi. In the line number three, we are having the another uh, symbol that you are can see. It is a Q. This Q is not only a variable; it is basically a complete Q data structure uh, that is totally based upon first in, first out. But this Q is not based upon first in, first out. This is a priority Q, and uh, by any any medium you can implement this uh, Q. You can implement it through the uh, array. You can implement using the heap. By any medium you can implement. In, by which medium you are applying? implementing this queue that will decide what will be the complexity of this entire algo because the complexity of this algo will depend upon how you are implementing this queue data structure so what we are doing initially we are uh, filling this queue by all the vertices of the graph by not only the vertices actually what we are doing we are filling the vertices with their distance values So in the queue, they are, they are not only the vertices; all the vertices are with their distance value. And the distance value, as per the line number one, initially will remain infinite, uh, other than the source vertex, and the the d distance value for the source vertex will remain zero. In the line number four, uh, we have started a loop, and the loop will run until your queue is not empty. So when queue become empty, the loop will automatically stop. So How many total vertices are in Q? We totally depend uh, that the number of vertices are in the graph. Let's suppose the number of vertices in the graph are n. So that means this loop can run maximum n number of times. And in the line number five, what we are doing, we are extracting the minimum element from that Q. As I told you, that uh, this Q is not based upon first in, first out. It is the priority Q. So what you need to do, you need to extract minimum elements. on which value you need to calculate the minimum so you will calculate the minimum based upon the distance value of of each of the vertex so as on the basis of the distance value of each of the vertex you will find that which vertex is having the minimum value that vertex you need to uh, 
uh, take out from that queue. So it is, uh, it will be easy that you are implementing queue using the array, but it will be difficult to get out the minimum element uh, from that kind of queue. So it is a suggestion that it will be very good if you are implementing this, this particular queue by using the concept of the binary heap. The binary heap, you will always find the minimum element you will get at the top of the uh, tree, top of the heap, and you can easily extract it from there. That heap will again uh, re heapify, and the next time the another minimum element will automatically get at the top. So, in the line number 5, we are extracting the minimum element as per the distance value, and we are naming it u. That, that uh, uh, u we are union, we are doing union of that uh, vertex with the with this set. Then initially it was empty and as the number of vertices will come came out from Q, we will be uh, do the union of this set. So while your Q become empty, so the, all the vertices will come in this particular set S. Line number 7. Line number 7 is the inner loop for this while loop. But there is a difference as what we did into the Bellman fold. In the Bellman fold, what we did, we run the outer loop for number of vertices and we will run an inner, inner loop for number of edges. But here we are not doing that. We are running the outer loop okay, as number of vertices. We are also running the inner loop for the number of vertices. So the complexity as what we what was in the Bellman fold was V into E, it can directly decrease as v into v in this particular algo but it, it is also depends upon the complexity of extract win how you are implementing that because it will also take some time so but somehow it will be very fast as compared to the Bellman fold. The line number seven what we are doing for each of the vertex v uh, belongs to the set of vg uh, you need to apply the relax so that uh, in Bellman fold we apply the relax for V into E number of times, but here we are not doing that. We are applying the relax edge, uh, relax function for very less number of times as compared to the Bellman fold. So let us apply this algo for this particular graph and we will see the simulation and uh, just have a look. So uh, we will again make the matrix square matrix as what we did into the Bellman fold. And this is my S set and initially it is empty and uh, this is uh, my source vertex S. I am using small s to represent this s to not get confused between this particular set and this source vertex and it is my t, it is y, it is x, it is y and it is z and as per the initial as per the initial setting this will remain 0, nil, infinite This is what I did the initial setting uh, for this particular first row. Uh, you can consider this first row as Q also. So what we need to now, we need to find out the, we need to extract the vertex which is having the minimum value based upon the distance variable. So easily you can detect the source is having the uh, minimum value. The, this, in this first row. So which of the vertex will extract out initially? So only the source world's vertex will get out uh, from this particular Q. So when this will be come out, so this will become union of this particular S set and initially it is empty. So, so what happened? Um, only the first element have entered in this particular set. So uh, always remember the value of the source vertex will never get affected so you can easily just note down this 
And uh, now what you need to do, you need to apply the relax now only four number of times. And the U will constant in this particular row. The U is your this S. What you need to do, you need to find the edge is available S to P, S to X, S to Y and S to Z. If any of the edge is available, then only the relax can be applied. If no edge is available, then you cannot apply the relax. So just try to find S to P is available. Yes, S to P is available and it is 10. The initial value of S is 0. So 0 plus 10 is 10. So it means this P will be updated with the help of S. And there is no possibility that uh, you will need to update this uh, particular cell again for this row. And this was happening in the Bellman fold, but this cannot happen in the like S file. Now let us have the any edge from S to X. S to X. So there is no direct edge is available. It means uh, uh, this particular cell cannot update it. S to Y. Yes, S to Y is available. So 0 plus 5 is 5. Uh, with S, S to Z, S to Z, no, no edge is available, it will not change. You can see, you can find out the difference uh, between the Bellman Ford and the Dicastra. You can easily compute uh, any, any row uh, because you need to apply the less, very less number of times. So now what you need to do, as you always remember which of the vertex is already came out from the queue, there is no need to consider it for the further step. So S has already came out uh, from the queue. So S cannot be considered again. Now uh, you need to take out the element based upon the distance value. And, and you need to apply the extract min on the remaining of the vertices. So how many vertices are right now in the queue? So four vertices P, X, Y, Z. And what are the values? 10, infinite, 5, infinite. So very easy to uh, take out the vertices which is the which is having the minimum value. So the y will came out. And when the y will came out, it becomes a part of this set S. What will happen if two of the vertices having the same distance value? In that case, arbitrarily you can uh, take out any of the value, any of the vertices. So as S and Y both uh, are out from this particular Q, so they both cannot change further. So they both will remain fixed through even throughout the uh, process. So now you need to apply the relax only the three number of times. So now this time u is y. This time u uh, that is the starting vertex will be as a y. So you need to find out the edge from y. y to t, y to x, y to z. So just uh, have the graph y. Where is the y? Yes, y is there. So y to t is available. Value is 3. And the value of the y is how much? 5. So 5 plus 3 is 8. And the initial value of t is 10. It means it can update it. Because of y. Yx. Yx. Yx is also available. With the 9 value. And y is having the previous value 5. So 5 plus 9. That is 14. Because of y. So yz is available. Yes, yz is also available yz is 2, so 5 plus 2 is 7 because of y. So now you take out the again the value which is minimum based upon the distance. So as these two have already out, so you cannot consider them. So now you have only three vertices in the queue p, x, and z. So the values are 8, 14, and 7. So which value came out? So only z can came out. So s, y, and Z. So these two, these three uh, vertices can never get updated after uh, you have uh, take out from the queue and store it into that particular set. So now the now for this particular row, the starting vertex will be considered as Z. So we need to find the edge from Z to P and Z to X. So just have in any vertex, any edge. So Z to P. Uh, no edge is available. So it cannot change. Z to X. Yes, Z to X is available. 6. And the earlier value of the Z is how much? 7. 
7 plus 6 is 13. The previous value of s is 14. So, okay, yes, it will update it. It will be updating with the because of z. Fine. As so, as this step is completed and uh, z has been came out in this particular uh, step, so it cannot be considered further. So, now only two vertices are remaining in the q, t, and x. What are the values of the t and x? The value of the t is 8 and the value of the x is 30. So, which can came out only? So, t can came out right now. Uh, so, s is S, Y, Z, and T. So, what cannot change? This cannot change. This cannot change. This cannot change. This cannot change. So, you need to just to check is there any edge available from P to X? If it is available, so you can apply the relax for that edge. So, P, X. Yes, P, X is available with the value 1 and 8 plus 1 is 9. The initial value of X is 13. So if it can change, it will become 9 because of P. So now only one uh, variable, one vertex is left into the Q. If you will just uh, take out that variable, uh, that vertex. So S, Y, Z, P and the last one is X. What you find? The last row can have no operation. So, this is the resultant uh, shortest path from the source vertex S. We will try to draw that. We can do that. So, these are the values, simple values. The meaning is that. Uh, from S to T, the shortest the value of the shortest path is 8. For S to F, the, the value of the shortest path is 9. For S to Y, the value of the shortest path is 5. For S to Z, the value of the shortest path is 7. But what is how you compute the path? So this pi variable will help you in that. So we are reaching to T with the help of Y. We are reaching to X with the help of P. We are reaching to Y with the help of S. And we are reaching to Z with the help of Y. So this is what the shortest path for this graph. And the complexity for I guess the algorithm is totally based upon the data structure that what you are using for implementing the Q. If you are implementing it the, with the help of binary E, in that case it will work very fast as compared to the Bellman 4 algorithm. So thank you friends.